This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to do an unboxing and we're going to put together one of the most interesting looking antennas I have ever seen from the good folks at Compactenna and Dr. Jack Nilsson. Stay tuned. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, let's take you back to Hamvention 2022. Some of you that have been following us uh, while we were at Hamvention in Ohio, we dropped by the booth of Compactenna and got to meet the inventor of several different antennas that we've had an opportunity to review on our channel, Dr. Jack Nielsen. And Dr. Jack was uh, showing us uh, his wares, and all of a sudden we kind of panned the camera over and we were looking at some kind of antenna we had never seen before. Now this is uh, directly from the website and you can see there's a couple of loops there on the left made of copper it looks like and then we've got what it looks to be a pretty standard compact antenna there with a ground plane. And as we look at the picture you can also see that he's got some instructions on how to mount this about five inches going up the black tubing there as well as how to connect those copper uh, wires to create the loops. And on the main website for this antenna, it's got a lot of good information. This is a dual band antenna, may work possibly on another band, but two meters and 70 centimeters for sure. And a lot of, shall we say, scientific um, ways of describing why this antenna is uh, ideal for those environments where you may have a lot of buildings or where you may not have a direct line of sight, maybe near line of sight. And we've definitely got some tests coming up in the future for those kinds of situations. Well, here's the box that it came in. And we don't usually do an unboxing very often, but you can see this is a, you know, a decently sized box from uh, Compact Tenna. And so we're gonna open this up and start pulling out all the pieces parts. And Dr. Jack had actually let me know that there's actually several pieces in here with different instructions uh, because some of these parts are sold separately. The uh, ground plane compact tent itself, for instance. So AC4DM gets out his trusty knife and uh, of course he's got a case knife and uh, he is opening up this box. Actually, I don't think he's using a case knife at all. <laughs> he's just got a box cutter there. Here we are. Now we've got all the paper out of the way. You can see several things in the packing and some instruction sheets and the like. There's one piece that I've seen a couple of times and that's the, what is what I would call a typical compact tenna. You've got the round black cylinder tube. This is the dual band two meter 440 uh, based antenna. In fact, I run one of these on my F-150 even now. KY-4 CKP runs one on his vehicle. Here we're looking at the bag that has the ground plane that you can use with the compact tenon when you're not putting it on your vehicle. Then we've got all this tubing. Pretty sure this is UV resistant. It's black, uh, kind of looks funky, and you can notice those silver clamps there are basically uh, ground plane clamps It looks like that he may have picked up uh, as just general merchandise, but used in this, uh, this kit. And then we have the copper wires that have already been bent into the circumference uh, that uh, Dr. Jack feels will give us the best uh, installation and performance. So again, looking at the, uh, the black tube there, pretty standard compact tenna, but all this other stuff really brings uh, this project to a whole new level. Got our seal for the antennas when we screw it onto the base with the, the lube or the grease. Some additional instructions there for the base, counterpoise with the four radials. It also gives us a little idea about how you might mount this at your, uh, at your house. This could be mounted outside or it could be up in your attic. Inside the base bag or the, uh, the ground plane uh, counterpoise bag, we've got some clamps, which we'll be using to affix the ground plane with the antenna to the big black uh, housing there, or the tubes. And there's the actual mount bracket, if you will, for the compact antenna. You see it's got four holes drilled in it. That's where those rods that you see there just to the right uh, will be uh, uh, attached. 
Here's everything out on the table. We were doing this indoors. It was a little bit warm outside, a little bit humid in Kentucky this day. So the first part of this, we did this indoors, but this is everything spread out. We were actually missing one installation sheet. Dr. Jack sent us a PDF quickly. And we got started. In fact, I was reading over some of the instructions. I look over to my left and AC4DM couldn't get, keep his fingers off the project. So he had already started. So we're uh, putting those rods that already have the bend and we're gonna put a screw, a washer, and a bolt to tighten those down and make those equidistant from each other. And the, basically the four corners, if you will, around that round piece of metal. Alrighty, so you can see we've got the first two already on there. It's using a, um, a UHF connector, female, on the bottom side. And uh, you can see that washer just floating there just below the bolt he just put on. And we've got to put on one more of those. So you can see the instructions, we're just following those as they were written. Every time I watch AC4DM on a project, I'm always amazed his hands just go to work. He's been such a, he's been a mechanic among other things throughout his life and he's just put together so many things and worked on so many things, his brain just kind of automatically goes to where things need to be and how to manipulate the different parts. So you can see the picture, we don't have the antenna on there yet, but now we've got a strong base, which we're gonna use a nut driver here to tighten up uh, some of those um, nuts. Make sure that these are, again, placed equidistant from one another. And that was kind of the first part of the project was putting together this base radial counterpoise system that you can use again with a compact tent if you're just gonna run the compact tent up in your attic, for instance. Alrighty, so that's looking really good. We do the uh, eyeball check, the eyechrometer, everything looked to be pretty good there. So we mounted the big plastic piece here uh, on a, uh, a shelving unit just so that we can get it up in the air as we begin to install the copper wire. And again, it looks like the silver elements that he's using for attaching the copper wire are uh, uh, grounding uh, elements that you could use if you were grounding different aspects of your uh, ham station. Just repurposed in this instance for these copper wires. So we're just uh, loosening some of the, the screws that are going to uh, eventually be tightened down on the copper to keep it from coming out once they're installed. And there we got the big loops, just handed those to me. These are already pre-bent to the, again, the circumference uh, and the uh, size that he wants it to be so that it will install easily onto those uh, brackets. So Don goes to work on the smaller of the two wire hoops here. They're, they're in halves. And we uh, rightly uh, figured out that this must be some way a reflector uh, and uh, it's gonna help direct some of that energy at the uh, 70 centimeter portion of the compact tenant that will ultimately be installed. Now this has actually got it upside down. We'll have it right way up here in just a little bit but this made it easier for us to install. Alrighty, so the smaller hoop is on there. Now we go to installing the larger section. Pretty ingenious way to install these hoops. I'm sure Dr. Jack uh, probably spent uh, a great deal of time and energy thinking about well, what would be the best way to make this an easy install for the customer. These turned out really well. Just tighten those down so that the copper wire stays where it needs to be. You don't have to over tighten these, just need to get them tight enough. First half of the large loop is now in place, so we'll loosen up those screws and we'll install the second half of this loop. This will be for the two meter portion of the antenna.
looking good. So this is what it looks like upside down uh, with the hoops installed on those big black pipes uh, that you can see there. Now we went looking. So we had to go to another barn. Of course, Don only has several. And uh, we got out our drive-on mast that we built for the gravel rally. I'll try to put a card up there just to remind you about the gravel rally. You ought to go watch that. That was a lot of fun. So now we have it oriented right side up. You can see the smaller hoop is up top. Larger hoop kind of goes the full uh, length there. But we're missing. You can see we've got it attached to the blue pole with some clamps. You, if we had the right diameter pipe, that would actually fit over the black pipe there. We didn't have the right diameter pipe utilizing the drive-on mass. And then we started fitting this port and uh, Don was thinking, well, the cable would go through the tube, the black tube there. It doesn't. It actually mounts on the outside uh, like you see there. And so the clamps that were included in the bag, Don's going to um, tighten those, uh, align those and then tighten those so that they're more or less equally spaced. We also want to make sure that the actual angling of those radials are again equal to the loops so that we're not canted to the left or to the right. So this was our first attempt at tightening those down and then we loosened them up again and we adjusted those radials so that they're actually pretty equally spaced uh, or distance from the actual hoop. So you'll see Don move it again a little bit that way. There we go. And that was pretty darn close. Again, using the icrometer. So we're almost there. This is a, a big part of the project, so to speak. And now we're gonna put on the, the lube, the grease, if you will, that uh, is included in the packaging. In fact, there were two of these tubes, so you'll have plenty. You can use this not only for the dielectric uh, that you need for the antenna, uh, but also for the uh, seal or the, uh, the rubber seal down there at the bottom. Don had already placed that on there, but you'll need to affix that black rubber seal there and then it's time to screw on the compact antenna. And for all intents and purposes, once we got to this part, we did some fiddling just to make sure that the hoops were installed, they were tight enough. Uh, we wanted the hour build to look very similar to the instruction sheet that was included. But take a look at that. What other antenna have you ever seen that incorporates all of these various elements? I asked Don, uh, you know, the theory about two meter, 70 centimeter propagation is not new, but the way to build an antenna, he goes, he's been doing this for 60 years. He's always learning something new. A project like this, even he appreciates. One of the other things that was in the instructions was, was if we had the right diameter pipe, we would want to actually um, put the middle black piece or tubing there on the pipe. We didn't have that capability because our uh, drive-on mast here was as wide as the pipe. So we used a couple of clamps that Don had around me, but it also uh, said about five inches. So we are measuring that and making sure that we're about five inches on the mast. Then it was time to go outdoors with the now fully assembled antenna with a cable connected and run some SWR checks. Man, it looked nice on this beautiful, slightly cloudy, but blue sky day. Our first antenna analyzer <laughs> wasn't working. So we switched to a radio and a different analyzer, which we'll show here. So Don, of course, has uh, uh, go kits where he can open it up and pull out a radio with a power supply and everything. All we need is a battery. And then we're going to utilize an SWR uh, strength meter, how many watts are being put out, uh, instead of the regular antenna analyzer that you've probably seen us use several times. So here's our SWR and power meter that we're going to use just for some initial checks to make sure that the antenna's SWR is not in a dangerous range. And according to Dr. Jack, no tuning necessary once this is put together. So we wanted to put that to the test. So here we are looking at the uh, the meter and uh, you can see we've actually got it on 200 watts so it's not moving as much. I'll show you a slightly different view of this in just a minute. But it definitely was working about 20 watts out and about a one to one 
um, uh, SWR there. And I think we were on 440 at that. I believe the 440 came in at one to one and two meters came in at about 1.3, 1 1.4. So that worked out really, really well. So the compact antenna micro beam, dual band antenna, uh, according to Dr. Jack, it'll retail for about $279. I believe it's currently being offered on the DX Engineering website. So for those of you, we'll try to put that link down in the description. But uh, a really interesting build. And we have some testing opportunities that we want to try out with this antenna. Uh, distance for sure, like we've done with other antennas. We also want to take a look at near line of sight type of tests. And one of the stages at the gravel rally was very difficult. So we're gonna to try to take it out there and see if it will do a better job versus uh, the Yagi. We didn't actually use the Yagi, but versus the Yagi, hopefully, and the GP3 antenna that we used uh, at that event, which did work. But we're wondering if maybe this directional antenna will actually do a little bit better job. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Stay tuned for part two as we take it out on the road. Thanks for watching and 73.